music and other things who um, lived long ago, I think in the, in the first century, of St. Cecilia. After the murder of her husband and brother-in-law, after she gave away all her worldly goods, her home and wealth gone, the emperor's men came for her. In a time when death was frequent and casual, she would not easily die. When the steam room failed, she was taken to the scaffold, long hair streaming down in front, the neck revealed. Before the first blow fell, the crowd, anxious to hear the hysterical cries of a witless woman, heard instead of wailing and pleas, a song. A unique and distinct melody rose in the air above that steamy and muddy crowd, unexpected, clear, strangely familiar. That descant line lifted and swelled into lyric and verse, matured and blossomed as it traveled. Suckling infants felt the sound on their skin, on the small hairs at the nape of their bonneted heads, and let the nipple drop from their hungry mouths. An air pleasing and innocent, sweet song of wind, of ice, of sun on earth, a song of love, forgiveness, and farewell. Stopped breath, stopped raucous laughter, the jeers, stopped, mo stopped music, movement. Nearby animals froze, birds re remained suspended in the air and on the celestial breeze fluttered instead pure tones of divine music. That poem, that sound, that lullaby climbed above the gathered crowd, slipped along the resonant breath to and from trees and grass and earth. Stupefied and paralyzed, the fetid crowd listened unprotected. The assassin lost his courage and after three blows that gouged deeply but did not kill, ran. Those that loved her carried her back to her cell, where she lived for three days. All the while, she spoke of God, her blood flowing. Clothing, rags, sponges collected her blood and became relics. Her skull still rests today in the Cathedral of Santa Maria on the island of Torcello. Her song still profusely flowing on the breeze her song still profusely flowing on the breeze.